Well guys, I'm sorry to be spamming you with many theropods at once, but I've been sitting on the Euteranus and Tarbosaurus for a few days, so now you have to pay the price. Hopefully, it's not too painful. Alright, Torvosaurus. I know many people have been hoping for this dinosaur. I actually knew it was coming from a source of mine, but I didn't expect it right on the heels of the recent Tyrannosaurus. Still, I'm sure none of us are complaining. I've always wanted a Megalosaurid theropod, but there just aren't any good Megalosauruses on the market. So I do have this collecte of the sister taxon, Torvosaurus. But firmly pushing this one out of the way now has to be PNSO's version, Connor the Torvosaurus. Now, that's a good name because as you can see, he looks like a real bruiser of a dinosaur, worthy of having the prefix Megalo somewhere in its family name. Although I have to say, he's surprisingly small. This model is about 30 centimeters, or about 12 inches, and at an estimated adult length of 10 meters, that makes this about 1 to 33 scale. Torvus means savage, and this looks like a savage alright, with a presence that can't be argued with. And for color, if you've complained for the longest time about the same browns and rust reds with stripes, you'll be relieved PNSO's moved away from that here. Instead, we have a rather somber grey on light beige, in a bit of a mottle pattern, tinged with a little bit of pink, and nice orange accents in the face. With any theropod, we'll start at the head. Torvosaurus isn't known from a full skull, so as usual, elements are filled in from close relatives and educated guesses. Brit 1991, for example, uses Ceratosaurus. There's also the Elvis specimen uh, that furnish more elements, leading to a longer and lower snout as you see reconstructed by Scott Hartman. This PNSO seems to be respecting their more current iteration as opposed to a more Carnosaurian skull. But I'll leave it to you Torbosaurus experts to decide how happy you are with this. Anyway, we see the lacrimal horns in the model, and these nasal ridges. It's nice that PNSO makes small features like these stand out in terms of quality, detail and painting. The scale detail is simply signature PNSO. I love the coloration of the face here over the antorbital fenestra. infringing the oral margins. The jaw articulates, as with many PNSO theropods, and the teeth are very nicely sculpted. But sadly, the paint application doesn't do justice to these teeth. As you can see, it is blotchy and not very naturally applied. Now this Torvosaurus got a thick neck. Again, just look at that skin texture and colour. Then going into the body, uh, it goes without saying that the scalation, the creases, the veining, the osteoderms are just as good as PNSO's current standard, and really, by now, not too many words need to be wasted at this point. You'll see a continuous row of spinal osteoderms here, which is certainly a point of interest. Again, different forms, orientations, imperfections, and these spinal osteoderms seem to be quite commonly depicted in Torvosaurus.
you'll see that unlike many of the later predators, the Megalosaurus had robust arms, and Torbosaurus was no exception. Now that's nicely depicted here. You can see an enlarged thumb claw, uh, which is still speculative, and surprising since we didn't see that in the Allosaurus, and that one we know for a fact. The pelvis was massive, as you can see here, and this model, like PNSO's recent ones, really seemed to put the flesh on the bones, and I'm getting used to this bulkier look now. Supporting this bulk are strong, massive legs. And counterbalancing this bulk, especially with the large arms, is a tail. Or just look at that scale detail here on the underside. And I like the um, continuation of the osteoderm motif from the torso down into here. And of course, the skin patterns are very nicely painted. Interestingly, Torvosaurus was contemporaneous with Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, two other well-known predators. Now, this coexistence may have been possible due to niche partitioning, either by habitat or prey type. And more sobering has been the suggestion that Allosaurus might have been preyed or at least scavenged upon by Torvosaurus. Alright, comparison time. First, let's have the Collecte Torvosaurus. You can see here too the row of midline osteoderms. And a slenderer animal here. Of course, the PNSO T Rex. and the Eofauna Giganotosaurus. And then we have the Allosaurus from PNSO. And finally, if a Torvosaurus is in fact confirmed from the tender groove formation, it makes sense to compare him to the W Dragon Giraffe Titan. So there we have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the PNSO Theropod so far. Not only has PNSO given us a rash of theropods, they've chosen from different clades. So tell me what theropods you hope that PNSO will do next. A genus you wanted for a long time or a group that you feel has been underrepresented? Let me know 